It is ironic and also insane that Apple is the company that has released a fully open data pipeline, training pipeline, open model. I mean, like, imagine, like, of all the big techs, Apple is a company that has open sourced everything. I mean, the license is a little bit dicey still, but it's quite unbelievable. I read the news. I was like, okay, I have to make a video about this. This new model is called Open ELM, in which uh, Apple has released a paper. Apple has released their training recipe. Apple has released scripts to do pre-training. Apple has released instruct models. And Apple has also released uh, guidelines about how you can use it within MLX. So for inference, so it's 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 ridiculously everything that Apple has released. Open ELM and uh, the first thing that they're doing is obviously that they're comparing this with all the available models, Open ELM and all the other public LLMs that they're calling public data set. I mean, Pythia, OPT is from Facebook, I guess. Pythia was quite popular one because of the open release. Mobilama, not from a big tech. Olmo was almost praised by everybody for releasing the entire pipeline again, just like Apple and Apple here. So public data set is available, code is available, weights are available. If you do not know what is a weight, basically the model, model, whatever you call as model, that is the weight, that is the weight. And uh, the model size is 1.1 billion parameters, 1.5 trillion training tokens, and uh, the average accuracy is 45.93. Uh, this is definitely not like your the best model, the state-of-the-art model, but they've released a bunch of smaller models that could make a lot of sense. I mean, recently somebody came and asked me, why don't we have an Android or an iPhone keyboard that is like AI powered? And uh, I think the brief answer to that is it's uh, it's computationally expensive to run at that inference speed. But I think that is what Apple is doing with the latest iOS and all the applications. And uh, these kind of smaller models could actually come into that particular space. And I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the web GPU space. So there is like sort of GPU that you can access within your web browser. And uh, these kind of models could also make a huge difference with the uh, ONNX runtime and all the other things. So uh, definitely an interesting thing, not, not necessarily just just don't look at the accuracy and uh, make a decision or judgment on the model it's it's def definitely useful for the world the society that we live in all the things that uh, they have released are available in hugging face so you can go here and then you can see the collections so they've got open elm instruct models and they've got open elm pre-trained models so if you want the base model they've got a 270 uh, million parameter model 450 million parameter model I mean, it's quite hard to see these kind of sizes um, these days. I don't know more like how many of you are following me uh, probably like for the last three years. You know that when OPT came, like I made video about OPT at that point, like that was like a really good video at that time. Like my video production, production quality would have been like quite bad, but uh, OPT I still remember very vividly. And in that series, now we have got 270 million parameter, 450 million parameter, 1 billion parameter, 3 billion parameter. The same thing, both instruction and also pre-trained model. Now, the reason is I'm not going to show you how to run this model. Maybe I can make a separate video if there is an interest. But the reason I wanted to make this video is actually to showcase that what all things that they've released and what kind of lessons or uh, insights that we can learn from this. The most important thing is the reproducibility and transparency of large language models are crucial. And that's why they're releasing Open ELM. And Open ELM uses something called a layer-wise scaling strategy to efficiently allocate parameters within each layer of the transformer models. So just uh, TLDR, uh, whenever we call a model, like a large language model, if you're not familiar with classical machine learning, all those things, just an information, what we call as a model is nothing but a deep neural networks, DNN. So it has got neural networks, multiple layers stacked. So there is one input layer, there is finally a softmax or something that goes through the embedding and then picks up the word. But inside there are like a lot of layers stacked. So what they are saying is that they've used a layer wise strategy, a scaling strategy to efficiently allocate parameters within each layers of the transformer model, leading to enhanced accuracy. For example, a parameter budget of approximately 1 billion parameters, open ELM exhibits 2.3% improvement in accuracy compared to Olmo while requiring two times a lesser fewer tokens. So when they compared it with Olmo, so while having lesser tokens, like two times lesser tokens, they're saying that there is a two percentage point increase in the accuracy. So now the increase in the accuracy is not very significant. Maybe you're like just 2%, but the main news is that you need half 
of the pre-training tokens. So when you put the same amount of tokens, now that is going to further improve the accuracy. And when you once you release the pre-training token, you are not just requiring less data. You are requiring less compute. You are requiring less time to build the model. So it develops the entire cycle altogether at all. And diverging from prior practices that only provided model weights and uh, inference code and pre-train on private data sets, our release includes a complete framework for training evaluation of language models on publicly available data sets. That is another thing that they very cleverly have done. They've not built their own data set. We're going to see the data sets that they use, but they've used all the publicly available data sets and they've used that data set to actually do whatever they have done here, which is quite impressive. Um, again, that is very promising because it is a culture that is set by open AI very sadly that these days, if you see LLM research papers, it mostly talks about benchmarks uh, we have used. They just say that we have used web data. That's it. You don't know what kind of data composition it is. You don't know. I mean, some companies still actually say, okay, we have got X amount of code, X amount of English language, X amount of other languages, but that's it. That is maximum what companies are doing. So it's very important for us to understand what kind of data sets used. I mean, back in the day, we even used to see the data set on which the model has been trained and then recommend it for that particular domain. Oh, this model has got a lot of news data set. So this model could be useful for a large language model for something like that. This model has got, let's say ticket information. So this could be used for customer support that is not available for us. Like we don't have that um, facilities or uh, we don't have that insight information to do that. But thanks to Apple or particularly this particular model, we have all the data set information. Not necessarily something Apple built, but also we have the information because they used open data set. We also release code to convert <coughs> models to MLX library for inference and fine tuning on Apple device and um, blah, 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 blah. The only catch here is that it's not a completely open license, I would say. So they have released it with a, a weird uh, Apple sample code license and uh, the license does not restrict you much. It just says that, okay, you are free to uh, use, reproduce, modify, redistribute uh, with or without modification, whatever you do, just do not change this license. So it says that you must retain this notice and following text disclaimers in all such redistributions of the Apple software. So that is all it says. Um, again, I, I appreciate them for doing this. It is only if you are going to use their model, I think you can still use their training recipe and all those things. Very surprisingly, Apple also used its own uh, core net framework. So this is Apple's own framework. So core net, they've used the own core net. So if you go to core net repository, let me quickly show you from the main repo. If you go to core net inside core net, you will see something called projects and inside projects, you will some see something called open ELM and inside open ELM, you can see a couple of instructions, a pre-training instruction, evaluation instruction, instruction, tuning instruction, <laughs> PEFT parameter efficient fine tuning. This is like the PEFT is what we mostly do whenever we say fine tuning. We don't do the original like full OG fine tuning. We mostly do PIFT and MLX conversion and hugging face. So you can click pre-training and that will give you the YAML file that has got all the information. Okay. They're shuffling the data, a bunch of information where they are getting data from and all these things. Now, when it comes to the data set information, so you can see here that they have specifically used refined web file, a subset of red pajama. I think this is from together and a subset of Dolma. So uh, web, at least refined web is something that you can easily find on hugging face, I guess, if you go. So the refined web, the main refined web and also a refined web version from Falcon, you can find it. And Falcon is another, uh, another interesting LLM that came from Abu Dhabi quite a while back. Uh, people may not remember it now. So they've used all these data sets that they've mentioned here. And uh, with that, they've also shared the architecture. So, okay, what is open ELM architecture? I'm not going to go into the architecture in itself. So you can see the training details and the co contribution, the composition of the data set, which is, I said, like something that is very important. Refined web 665 billion tokens. So red pajama has got GitHub. That means, you know, it's code, uh, books, archive, Wikipedia, stack exchange, C4 and uh, pile is another data set. Um, which is recently uh, a bit of uh, under a bit of controversy uh, because uh, some YouTubers have uh, started claiming that Pile has got their training, uh, the YouTube transcription and uh, they're like, okay, Apple has stolen our data. Um, that That's a totally different um, conversation. Dolma has the stack, the stack is coding, Reddit, uh, 
Teo, Project Gutenberg, Wikipedia and Wikibooks. And then you can actually see the accuracy and all the information that they've shared. Technically, this is not like an amazing model, I would say uh, the model is okay, but for its size, I think this is definitely usable. I'm definitely going to make separate videos about uh, how we can leverage this model different forms, um, either on MLX or with the PyTorch Google Collab, or probably if it is possible, I'll also see if we can do some ONX runtime and uh, web GPU. But the main idea of this particular video is at least to do the education. It's more like a paper review. So the way they have done uh, instruction tuning um, is also they've checked the, uh, they've taken ultra feedback, uh, which is another data set quite popular to have good result on empty bench, like multi-tone conversations. And uh, they've done instruction tuning using alignment handbook library. I think this is a handbook that was released by hugging face, as you can see here, and they have used that and they've done the fine tuning. There are more information on this paper. Definitely you should check it out. I don't want to bore you with further information. I will link all the required information, the models, the script, the repo, the paper, everything in YouTube description for you to check it out. But again, kudos to Apple. I mean, honestly, like open AI, um, kind of made it a culture to just release a technical paper and move on. Previously people used to actually, actually what they have done is what it used to happen in the industry, but it doesn't happen anymore. Even Facebook has not shared any of the training data set information and also the, the code, which I can also partly understand because once you share the training data set information, you are going to be subjected to copyright cases, lawsuits and all those things. But time and time again, when we have uh, models and releases like this, it feels really good to learn a lot from um, these kind of uh, tech giants. See you in another video. Happy prompting.